Okay, we're going to talk about a different kind of isomer, one that you wouldn't even think is an isomer, but it's an isomer about rotation around carbon-carbon single bonds. And if you look, as I rotate between this carbon, which is carbon 2 and carbon 3 of 2-methylbutane, there's infinitely number of isomers if you consider each one of these position a different isomer. Well, when you look at the structure as it rotates, there are really only six interesting structures. When the bonds all line up, that's called eclipsed. And when the bonds are in between, that's called staggered. As they rotate, when they're eclipsed, they're higher in energy because the electrons in the bonds are hitting each other. That's called steric interactions. When they're staggered, they're at minimal or lower in energy. So what we're going to do is look at this structure as it rotates around. Now, if you look over to the right of your screen, right over here, right here, this is what's called a Newman projection. We're going to learn how to draw that. It's one of our first projections where we're taking a three-dimensional structure and rendering it in two dimensions and trying to understand behavior. So let's look at 2,3-dimethylbutane. This is the structure that we have. And we're going to look down, take our eyes and look down this bond between this carbon and the back carbon. Now let's draw all the things that are on the front carbon. If you look, when I redraw it, we have a methyl group on coming out and a hydrogen coming back. So I'm going to label everything so we can see it. So here is a methyl group and here's the back carbon. It's a circle and there are two H's, one going coming out and one going back, and then in the plane is a CH3. So in Newman projection, you line up two, ca two carbons. The front carbon is given a dot, and the back carbon is given a circle. Now I'm not the best at drawing circles, but that's how you draw a Newman projection. And then what you would do is you take these carbons and make them the spokes coming out of the front carbon. And these groups are attached to the back carbon. So the back carbon is this back circle. And so I'm going to put these lines indicate that the bonds are attached to the back carbon. Now, if we look down here, we will see on our right hand side a CH3 and our left hand side an H and coming down below is a CH3 and then there's a CH3 on the back carbon going up and then two H's. Well I'm going to clean this up just a little bit because I think it looks funny and I have the beauty of this drawing program and I'm going to substitute this structure for this. So that's the perfectionist in me, making sure my structures look great. But remember, you're going to have to be able to draw your own Newman projections, and so you might have to practice drawing circles. So if you look, this is one of the staggered conformational isomers, or one of the minima. This interaction right here, where you have two methyl groups that are have a 60 degree, what we call dihedral or torsional angle, are called is called a gauche interaction and it's higher in energy. When the CH3s are opposite each other, this is called an anti, and that's the when they're farthest apart, that's lowest in energy. Now we're going to rotate the front carbon. Usually when you draw Newman projections, especially the staggered conformational isomers, you're going to keep one carbon still and the other carbon you're going to rotate. So I'm going to keep the front carbon still and then rotate the back carbon to see how the energy changes as this methyl group rotates from this position to this position. 
Okay, so I'll put in the front carbon with CH3, a CH3, and an H. And I'm going to rotate the back carbon so the back carbon will go here. CH3 and these two will be my H's. I'm going to do it once again since I already have this third Newman projection all set up. Put a CH3, the front carbon stays the same. And then I'll rotate the back carbon to here. So CH3, H, and H. Now what you want to do is analyze the energy and look for these gauche interactions. So if you look, this middle structure has two of these gauche interactions. So even though these are all minima, this is a higher minima, minimum than this one. And in fact, these two have one anti and one anti and one gauche. So these first and third Newman projections have the same energy. I'm going to label these one, two, and three. And then we're going to look at the maxima, the eclipse that happened as they rotate around. Okay, in order to show eclipse, we sort of put these right next to each other. It's a little harder to draw. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set up my three different eclipse structures and let's look at the energy as the bonds rotate or that one bond rotates. Okay, so I added the front carbon. I'm going to take the back carbon and rotate it. So now we have two CH3s lined up next to each other, and then an H, and then an H. Now as we continue to move this around, here's another CH3 lined up with the other CH3, and an H, and an H. And the last one will have a CH3 lined up with an H, and then the H, and the H. Then you look at the interactions. This one, let's call it 1.5, has two CH3s lined up, and then a CH3 and an H, and an H and an H. This one, which is 2.5, halfway in between 2 and 3, has the same interactions. And the last one, 3.5, or 0.5, because we're back to the beginning, would have a different interaction. These two would be higher in energy and the same and this maxima would be maximum would be a little bit lower so now we're going to make a little potential energy graph of this rotation so if we look at 1 2 and 3 the highest of the 3 is number 2 so i'm going to put a dot right here these two, number one and three, are both minima, but they're a little bit lower. And the, the difference in energy here is like 12 kilojoules per mole or three kcals per mole. Not a lot, but it's interesting to go through and understand the energy of these rotations. Now, if we look at these, these 1.5 and 2.5 are both at the same level. and their maxima, and 3.5 would be down just a little bit, which of course would be the same as 0.5 right here. Okay, so I'm not very good at drawing these lines, so you're going to have to bear with me, and we're going to take one shot at it. Goes down, and then it rotates, comes back up, and then it rotates and goes back down, comes up and rotates and goes like this. That was really ugly. Sorry about that. But that is the energy diagram of the rotation around the C2-C3 bond of 2-methylbutane.